Stephanie Lemon and I have been practicing athletic training as a certified athletic trainer for 31 years. I have my high school athletic trainer and I have worked in, high, in my particular high school for 27 years. In my own words, evidence-based practice is practicing our skills and our profession based more on research and data as opposed to a cookie cutter way of just doing things because that's how everybody else has always done them. I think all healthcare professionals are responsible for practicing evidence-based medicine. I think in all settings, if you're going to be an athletic trainer, it does not matter which um, setting you're in, you need to be aware of and practicing evidence-based practice, whether it's high school like me because it's the health care of my student athletes or you're a um, program director because that's what we need to be teaching our new athletic trainers. In my athletic training facility I've had to really, um, so I haven't had to do a lot of adjustment but there have been some practices that I probably have done for forever that I kind of have realized through evidence-based medicine that they're not as effective as I might have thought they were. So there are some things that I probably have kind of thrown out and some things I've added based on the things I've learned. Still new to me. I'm old school, so I'm still learning. I think it's very important in athletic training, partly because it's all about the healthcare. And you want to provide your student athletes or whatever your clientele is, whatever your patient population is, with the best care you can give them. But it's, I think, really important for us because we are, have struggled as a profession for so long to gain that respect as a medical profession, that we, medical profession we are. And this is just one way, especially in a setting like mine. In a high school setting, I'm the trainer, and I'm just part of the school faculty, and I take care of the kids when they get hurt, but really that just means that I ice or I, you know, um, make sure they have water. So especially for someone in this setting, I think it's extremely important because it gives us more impetus to what we do, and it really stresses our knowledge and background. When the um, NATA and the BOC and the Education Council decided that we needed to start doing things based on evidence-based medicine. Before that it was, like I said, I'm old school. I didn't, research was not stressed when I was in school. Um, and I've been practicing on my own for 31 years. And I've been in the high school setting for the most part. I mean, I did do clinical for a year. And I did do some volunteer stuff with some um, professional sports. And, and I did do two years of college, but that was back in the day, and evidence-based was not. I mean, I, I, I really didn't even know what it was until the BOC said, we're going to start doing things evidence-based. I think all evidence-based medicine is a pretty broad spectrum of knowledge. So I don't think all, but I think you need to know your patient population and the things that you need to be doing to best care for your particular population. So that might be different for me than it is for somebody in the clinic. It might be different for me than it is for somebody who specializes specifically with professional baseball. Concepts are the same, it needs to be evidence-based, but I probably have to have a, a little more wide range of clinical-based I think it all depends on the athletic trainer. Uh, I think it, for younger athletic trainers, it's probably going to be easier because they've been getting the evidence-based practice in their educational background. I think for some of the old folks like me, it's we tend to be more stubborn and slow to make to change. So yeah, it's going to be different in different with different people. It, it's going to be a very personal thing, I think, but it's something that needs to happen.